and welcome to the introduction for Film Wash for After Effects Volume 4. We're just going to be taking a look now at how we install and the basic usage of the Film Wash Color Effects for After Effects. So once you've downloaded and unzipped the archive, or alternatively, if you have your CD inserted, you'll see this little folder here called Film Wash for After Effects Volume 4. So installation is actually really, really easy. All we have to do is drag these two folders into our After Effects folder. Now I'm showing you this on a Mac, but the installation process is exactly the same on Windows. The only thing that actually changes is the folder that you need to install it to. And that's contained within the installation instructions right here. Cool, so um, once we've come into our version of After Effects, whichever version of After Effects you're working with, now all of the color effects work with After Effects 6.5 and above. There are some of the extras such as the film grain and the vignettes which only work with After Effects CS3 and above. But um, other than that, everything else is the same. So we just need to find our presets folder, double click on that, take our two folders here, Film Wash Volume 4 and Film Wash Volume 4 8-bit, and just drag those in there and we'll just copy those over. Now all you have to do is restart After Effects and they'll be in your animation presets folder. Now once in After Effects, if you can't see your effects and presets folder, uh, you might want to come up to the windows here and just go to effects and presets. I have mine over here on the right hand side. Now I can also browse these presets in Bridge, but you're not really going to see anything uh, special with them. So, you know, I wouldn't bother really too much. So we've got a Film Wash Volume 4 and Film Wash Volume 4 8-bit here. Now I'll have a look at the difference between what these two folders are because if we open them up, at first sight they seem exactly the same, but um, there's a very small difference. Cool, all right, so um, how do we start applying our first film wash? Well, the whole point of film wash is to make it as easy and as customizable as possible. So within our seven different folders here, each of these folders have a, uh, a further selection of different styles and different um, different looks, so we've got our um, so we've got our cross processing. We've got some uh, we've got cross color. We've got cross balance. We've got some film stock homages, uh, expired film, and a few extras. So the easiest way to apply these is to come in and apply them to an adjustment layer. So if I go uh, layer new adjustment layer here, I can then take any one of these. For example, let's take Light Morning, just double click on it there, and it will apply that straight away. And let's uh, do a before and after, so just turn the adjustment layer on and off. And you see it's applied it really, really easily. So the idea behind these is to make them as easily accessible and as easily adjustable as possible. So we come over to our effect controls on the left hand side, we can see that we've got um, a couple of different markers which have got uh, asterisks by them. So the little stars mean that those are the ones and only those ones are, uh, are really designed for you to adjust them. So the first one at the top, and these are common for all of the effects, is mix back the original. So this is a slider, and we take this from zero to 100. Zero, zero is the um, absolute maximum of the effect, and 100, is no effect applied at all. So we can mix those in. Uh, so it makes it easier to, to turn up or turn down the, um, the size of the effect and the um, scale of the effect without any difficulties. Now most of these are designed to look pretty good and give you an idea of what's going on at 50. So, um, so that's where we're gonna stick this one here. We also have a desaturate command going on as well. So we can just pull out some of that color as well. And that again goes from zero to 100. You'll see that even at 100, we're not completely desaturated. And that's because of course, we're mixing this back to 50%. If we take, took this down to zero, we would be completely desaturated. So let's uh, just delete that and start up another one. Let's have a, a quick look at some of the different styles we've got. So the cross processing here, so this gives them some quite cool and, uh, and interesting different types of looks. Uh, we've got the sort of cooler, more contrasted looks. We've got softer looks here, such as the uh, yellow vintage here. Uh, warmer looks with the warm faded. Colder looks, or cooler looks with the cold pop. We also have cross color over here. So these are, are taking things a little bit more extreme. So we have things like uh, 60s color, 
but as you can see these still have the same two controls to um, to work with we have the mix back original so we can take this more or less depending on what we want and the desaturate so we can just sort of knock some of that back let's just take a look at the before and after again it's quite a small change but actually over the course of the entire film that actually is quite a nice nice good change that I uh, actually really like that look so after the cross colors we now have the cross balancing so these are some of the more utility sort of things and things that you would use all the time say if um, your white balance is slightly off maybe uh, you can use these to help bring them back in or you can also use them as a sort of creative tool as well so we have daylight to tungsten which is going to make things a lot warmer that's not what we need in this case so we have also tungsten to daylight which can make things a whole lot cooler as well and we have different versions of those not only do they have different strengths but they also have um, you know completely unique looks to them as well now one of my favorite sections is this film stock homage so sometimes you don't need you know those big um, cross processing or cross uh, balancing kind of looks you just want something with a bit of punch and that's what all of these homages are so we've taken some of the uh, you know classic uh, film stocks and made our, um, our slight homage to, uh, to all of these so you can see they've all got their own look their own characteristics and again no matter which one we choose if we look over on the effects controls we've got these two that have got our mix back so we make it a bit stronger and our desaturation so we can really get a very very cool looking piece of film here very very simply very very easily so before after before after Cool. Now there are over 70 different looks that we have here split over the, uh, the film stock, uh, the cross balancing, even the expired film stuff here, which is also fairly cool. So this is again really getting quite a strong look going on. If it's too strong we can just mix it back. That's giving us a really lovely sort of vintage feel there, oh, brilliant. And in addition to those over 70 different looks, what we've also got here is a little folder with extras. So if you've used Film Wash for After Effects Volume 3, some of these will be familiar to you, um, but we've improved on, uh, on other ones for you as well. So let's uh, take a quick look and we'll just find a nice, a nice color. So let's take actually just uh, maybe a gold here and we'll just take some of the saturation out on that cool so that's quite a, a subtle little look and let's see what we've got with some of the extras here so let's uh, start up a new adjustment layer for these extras and we've got things like a, a fast grain if we want to apply a little bit of film grain here we've got fast grain and, and we've really only got one control that we want to uh, adjust here and that's really the amount of noise we can just take that down or up as much as we want to and 10 is probably a good place for uh, for doing this here and that's just a nice fast grain effect but something that's new for volume 4 is our filmy grain so we could have called this filmic grain but no we chose to call it filmy grain instead this is a little bit uh, more in depth so we've got things like grain strength adjust grain size we want color noise and grain amount here so the main ones we're going to be looking at are going to be the top two which is why they're at the top so we've got grain strength We can turn that up and really crank up the uh, the grain there. We've got the uh, grain size as we drag this up, probably not too high. We can start getting slightly more um, uh, bigger pieces of grain 
to simulate different types of uh, types of film stock. So if you want to have color grain, you can just turn the checkbox on there and that'll produce some color grain for you. I'm gonna leave that turned off. And we've also got a grain amount. You'll probably use this very, very rarely because the grain strength is the one that's gonna do most of the job. But if you want to pull this down for a slightly more subtle look or pull it all the way up for a very, very visible look here, you can do exactly that. So we take our before and our after. Let's take this back down to where it was. So that's at 60. Take the grain strength to 15. Now you might not be able to see the subtlety of the grain once it's uh, being compressed down so much, but uh, depending on how you're watching it, this should be quite, uh, quite visible now. This is slightly slower to render out than the um, fast grain, of course, but it gives you a really nice and really different effect than the, uh, that the fast grain does. Uh, we also have, let's uh, build up one more layer here as well. We'll come into some of these in, uh, in other exercises actually, um, and take a look at the film wash scratches. So what these are doing is, uh, yeah, if we just render this out a little quickly, what these are doing is it's just rendering scratches up along the, uh, along the image and we've got a couple of controls over here for the scratches amount and the scratch speed. So if you think that the scratch speed is too fast we can turn that down and if you think the amount is too much or too small we can adjust that there. So if I turn my scratches amount up here we get loads more scratches. If I take my speed down or up we get much livelier scratches going on there. So you can see how easy it is to start to build up uh, some of these effects. So let's uh, turn our scratches off for a second here. And before I wrap up this particular exercise, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how to use the vignettes. Now vignettes can play a huge part in any sort of color grade. So that's why we've got a whole load of vignettes going on right here. Now all the effects in the folders one to five work in After Effects 6.5 and above. Um, stuff in the extras is not guaranteed to work in 6.5. Some of it will, um, most of it will work in 7, um, but all the vignettes will only work in CS3 and above, simply because of different things that were added to the After Effects application at a different date. So how do we use these vignettes? Well, really simply, let's, uh, let's actually just look at one vignette and we'll come into uh, to the others in, in other exercises. Um, we want to use the dark ellipse, for example, all we're going to do is make sure we have no other layers selected here. We can just click on any bit of the gray over here and just have no layers selected and then double click on my dark ellipse. And that's, that's really all there is to it. We have two controls now. We have a center control, which figures out where the center point of the ellipse is going to be or where the center point of the vignette is going to be. And then we have this control over here, which figures out the main size of the ellipse or the main size of the vignette. So we can get that falling off quite nicely. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blend mode on this, maybe to something like soft light. That's kind of nice. Hit T to bring up the opacity, maybe bring that down just a tiny amount. So we keep this fairly smooth, there we go. And let's just see the before and after. And that's been really, really simply um, built up. All we've got here is one color layer, one grain layer, and one vignette layer. Really simple and still completely customizable. In the coming exercises, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be looking at some of the different types of effects that we can do with the Film Wash uh, Volume 4. And we're gonna be exploring some of the other functionality a bit further. So I hope you join me and I'll see you very soon.